So we've got a comment from somebody, I can't remember who or where, but I do remember it was on one of my previous videos and it was asking to do a tutorial for how to drop some C4 or some explosive next to a wall, have the explosive blow up and destroy the wall using some button clicks. So all I've got to make this work is four sprites plus a ground sprite. So I've got my player sprite, which has nothing but the platform behavior on it with default controls enabled. I have a wall sprite, which is a 16 by 64 size. It's a solid red color and it has a second frame, which is the wall in its destroyed state. Now the bounding box on the first frame is the entire sprite because I don't want the player to be able to pass through. And on the second frame, the bounding box is just that tiny little section of wall because when there will be some wall remain, I want the player to be able to jump onto it or bump into it and then have to jump over it. So it still will be a solid item. Uh, with that said, I've assigned the solid behavior to the wall. I also have an explosion sprite and a a uh, little piece of dynamite which I've called bomb. The bomb is just two frame animation which just kind of makes it look a little bit nicer like it's about to go off and then the explosion is a simple five frame animation which basically just animates an explosion. I have nothing at all on the event sheet so let's go ahead and make this work. So I'm going to go ahead and add an event and I'm going to say keyboard and I'm going to say on key space and I'm going to use the space bar so what I want to happen is when the player walks over to the wall and presses the space bar, he will drop a piece of dynamite exactly where he's standing. So I'm going to say on space bar pressed, I'm going to add an action. I'm going to go to the system and I'm going to create that dynamite or bomb object. And I'm going to create it on my objects layer. Um, and there's nothing special about these layers. I've just got background with nothing on it. And then a second layer with objects, which is what I'm putting my game objects on. And I'm going to create that dynamite bomb sprite exactly where the player is so the player x and the player y now the image points of all of these sprites are set to the middle and that's exactly what's going to line up so the dynamite will go exactly where the player is now if i test out the game if i walk over to the wall can't go through the wall but if i push space bar I now put the dynamite down, which is good. That's exactly what I want. Now I need the dynamite to be able to have a timer before it explodes. So we're going to go to the behaviors. We're going to add a new behavior and we're going to come down to timer. We're going to add that timer. And now I can add another event that says add event and I can say bomb. And then I can say on created. So the moment this thing is created, once it's created, we're going to start the timer. We're going to call this timer EXP for explode. And I'm going to set that timer for two seconds. Now we need to tell the game what to do when the timer goes off. So we're going to go back to bomb and we're going to check that timer. So we're going to say on timer, which basically means when the timer runs out and we've called it EXP. So we're going to reference that in the tag. So when the EXP timer expires or goes off, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is destroy the bomb object because that will have exploded. So you can come down here. You can search for things up here as well if you haven't, uh, if you can't find them in the list. We're going to destroy the bomb. But before we destroy the bomb, we're going to get the bomb to spawn another object. So we're going to say bomb. And we are going to say, I'm going to just type it in up here to find it. We're going to say spawn another object. That object is going to be the explosion. It's going to be on the objects layer again and image point zero. And the image point is basically the little dot that you saw in the middle of this uh, bomb sprite here. So we're going to spawn this one exactly on top of that one, which makes sense because the explosion would start in the middle of the bomb and then go out in equal directions around it. That's going to happen though before we destroy the bomb, otherwise there'll be no bomb to spawn an object from. So we're going to spawn that explosion, then we're going to destroy the bomb. And if we play it now, it should look pretty good, but it won't do anything because we haven't programmed in any of the logic for that. But after two seconds, the bomb will destroy and the explosion will, will come in. And uh, we can do that as many times as we want to. Put in bombs everywhere. Right, now we need to tell the game what to do should the explosion overlap any of the wall because this is the blast radius so this is if you're overlapping this and if you had other characters in the game or enemy characters 
if they were overlapping this sprite when it went off then they would they could take damage you could program that in but at the moment we're just going to say if this sprite is overlapping the wall then we need to to basically blow up the wall wall and we're going to say on collision with another object and we're going to say explosion so the moment that explosion touches the wall we're going to say wall and we're just going to simply set that frame to one which if you remember when I click on the wall, frame one is the destroyed wall part. Now it's important when you're in here under the animation is to set that speed to zero. Otherwise it's gonna instantly play when you start the game and you're gonna have this sprite straight away. So just make sure that the animation speed is set to zero. Now that should be enough to make everything work. So if we go over to the wall now, pop down the C4 and it explodes. Now we can blow up the wall. Now. We're going to add in another functionality to this because we want to be able to allow the player the option to set the dynamite off whenever they want to. So let's say we've got a scenario where we put down the bomb and then we walk back and then we want to be in charge of when we blow up the wall. So it doesn't automatically play that timer. Well, that's really, really simple to do. All we need to do is set a couple of instance variables. So let's go back to the player, add an instance variable, and we're gonna say Boolean, and we're gonna call this one bomb dropped. This initial value is not gonna be true because we haven't dropped the bomb when we start playing the game. Let's move that bomb away. So now we're going to go back to our four events and we're going to say on spacebar pressed and we're going to select the whole block and push B on the keyboard to create a sub event and everything now underneath this block will only work if the top part of the block is true. So until we spe press spacebar none of this will action. So we're going to say player and we are going to say compare boolean. So we're going to check to see if the bomb has been dropped. So if we press spacebar and the bomb if we push I on the keyboard to invert that and we say the bomb hasn't been dropped then we're going to create an object which means that once we have set the player's boolean to bomb drop true the spacebar is not going to drop any more bombs so if the bomb hasn't been dropped we're going to create an object and we're going to go ahead and go player and we're going to set that boolean bomb dropped to true which basically means it's only going to trigger this once so now if i go back to the game and i push space i can't push space anymore because my boolean is set to bomb drop true which means that this won't work when we press the spacebar let's go ahead and copy and paste that entire block out and then reinvert that one to bomb drop is true and this time we're going to detonate the bomb when we press spacebar so we're going to basically press it once to drop the bomb and then once to detonate the bomb now we need to get rid of this bomb on created start timer and add it to bomb dropped we can change the timer to one second to make it a little bit quicker. You could just take this timer out altogether and just destroy it here and put all that up in that one. Um, if you want that one second delay, let's go and see what that looks like first. And then we can make a decision on it. One second. So what actually happened there was because I pressed the space and it instantly dropped the bomb to true it instantly triggered the second part after one second so effectively what's happening is both of these are triggering at the same time because I'm instantly setting the bomb drop to true so what I want to do is put a little bit of a pause in there so you can go to system and, and uh, select wait and we're going to select 0 0.5 seconds and we're going to align the event so it says create the object wait 0 0.5 seconds and then set the bomb to true which means that the space bar won't be pressed simultaneously and have a simultaneous set of commands so now I can push space that's now not going to explode until I press space again and then it waits one second and explodes and like I mentioned before we can delete that and we can just drag these two right up in there if you want an instantaneous explosion so if I go over to the wall push space bar run away from the wall as soon as I feel so ready I can push space and then destroy the wall and it's as simple as that really just a nice simple three events to create that dynamite dropping explosion if you're enjoying the content don't forget to drop a like and perhaps subscribe for future tutorials and devlogs 
And if you want to help support the channel, then do consider becoming a Patreon. There's a link in the description and more information about what's on the Patreon can be found there. And speaking of Patreons, I'd like to give a massive thank you and a shout out to Fuzel CC, Olivier Bernier, Amari Lewis, M Mark Games, Tor, Hammock Alexanderson, Martin K, 8 Big Gamer, Davy Wagnerock, John Allegretta, Dan, Matt Nixon, Jordan Lane, Nicholas, and Callum Keen. Thanks so much for supporting the game dev journey. And for more information, as mentioned, there's a link in the description.